Yo, what up, everybody? I'm your host, Will. Welcome to Phantom Frequency. If this is your first time joining us, we cover all types of topics in the world of pop culture. So if that's your thing, if you're all nerdy, make sure you're clicking the buttons below the video. And for those of you joining us once again, welcome back. We appreciate you for coming through once again. We're going to be getting into episode five of The Boys, season four, one of my favorite shows on TV ever. And yeah, man, so this is definitely not the most eventful episode, but there definitely was some interesting things going on, um, especially with the character of Butcher, man, Billy Butcher. Carl Urban's character, of course, man, this guy is going crazy. It is definitely confirmed, in my mind at least, that Jeffrey Dean Morgan is not there. We know Becca isn't there, and that to me was a clear indication. He is not seeing Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Jeffrey Dean Morgan is the darkness inside of him. He's the dark side that he developed through becoming one of the boys, right? And that is the thing that I think that's driving him to do all this crazy shit, like sawing off Samir's fucking leg to make everyone else think, including Victoria Newman, his baby mama, that he's dead. So he can get another dose of this virus in order to kill these soups because he's going to get it at any means necessary, like the conversation he had with Jeffrey Dean Morgan's character on the bench in the park and everything in, in previously in episodes uh, four and three. So that's the thing for me where I'm like, this fucker's crazy. His his dad is not there. So, I mean, his uh, I mean, uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan is not there. So that also makes me kind of question. But now I think it's kind of confirmed. But at first I was questioning if Huey's mom was there, but she's definitely there. Like, I'm pretty fucking sure she's there because his dad's reacting to it, too. So now we know for sure that he's there, but it was very fucked up to see what was going on with Huey's dad and all that stuff, Hugh Sr., if you will. And that was kind of the crazy thing with him teleporting, you know, and popping up in the middle of people and literally killing him because he's literally popping up in the middle of their anatomy and, like, exploding them and shit. It's like, holy shit, that kind of is what would happen more theoretically or realistically if some kind of power like this existed or an ability like that existed within a human being anywhere. And because his mom injected, uh, Huey's mom injected that compound V into his IV in order to, uh, in order to resurrect him and, and bring him out of being brain dead in his tumor, I mean, in his uh, coma and whatnot from the stroke. And that to me was just like, oh shit, man, this is crazy. And then he didn't even remember who he was for a minute. And I think that's kind of part of the compound V kind of fucked his brain up to where I don't think he's going to be quite himself 100%. And I think he's going to maybe go into that zombie vegetative state that kind of happens to people that take Compound V in the comics when they get resurrected in that way. So I think they're definitely going to be bringing out that element of the comics in through Hugh, Hugh Sr. and maybe potentially other characters down the line, especially if they actually end up killing any of these soups between now, the end of this season, or in next season as well. So a lot of interesting stuff going on there. Definitely. So I would say those are kind of the most interesting storylines kind of going on. And then with M.M. leading the mission with uh, Annie and Frenchie and everything like that in order to try to get this compound, uh, in order to get this virus or whatever, they're like, man, it's kind of fucked up, but I guess it's our only chance to do it. I guess we got to do something, right? So they're teaming up with um, uh, Giancarlo Esp uh, Esposito's character. Um, I can't remember um, um, the guy's name, but uh, but they team up with him and get him out of prison and try to cut a deal with him to where they'll get time off his sentence if he'll help them get the virus and everything like that. So that's what leads them over to the fucked up farm where they're doing these experiments on these animals that are going completely ape shit, pun intended. And man, things get crazy. Victoria Newman shows up, pops some heads and everything, not of any of the characters, of course. And, you know, get some good stuff with her. And Claudia DeMitt, man, just, she does such a great job with this character. I love the way that she's able to make this character so relatable and human and kind of likable. But at the same time, she's doing these villainous things. And I think she does such a great job of that. And her charisma on screen is just always there. So, yeah, Claudia DeMitt, one of the best actresses I've seen in a while. Discovered in the last few recent years, like, really getting, doing her thing through Call of Duty and this show and other things like that. And I can't wait to see what else she does. And let me tell you what. Jack Quaid, you a lucky motherfucker, bro. You lucky motherfucker for hooking that up in real life. So Huey and Victoria Newman, uh, thang. But I, th I also think that's why the chemistry is so good on screen with those two in the last couple seasons as well, with them hooking up. Uh, I think that really helped uh, uh, get get his uh, get his shit over. But anyway, but anyway, I digress. Um, but yeah, you know, a good fun episode. I thought the Frenchie thing with the murder stuff and him going to the to the jail, uh, going to the to the to the police station to turn himself in was kind of stupid to me. Because here's the thing. And, and don't get mad at me in the comments, all right? But hear me out. Why would someone that's done this kind of work all this time, all of a sudden, because he happened to hook up with some guy that he killed their parents years ago, right? He never hooked up with anyone like that before. He never thought about this shit before. Like, that's the one thing that broke him? I don't know. 
Maybe it's the trauma of seeing the trauma affect somebody. Maybe that's what affected him. Maybe he never saw any of the aftermath of what happened to anybody in the past he went to go get. I don't know. But to me, it just feels a little weird. I just feel like they never know what to do with Frenchie in the last couple of seasons, especially. Like, after season two, they just don't seem to know what to do with him at all. Same thing with Kimiko. It just seems like it's all over the place with them a little bit. I always enjoy their performances, especially Kimiko um, with a... Um, with, uh, um, Oh, damn. No. Oh, my God. I can't believe I just forgot her name. What the hell is wrong with me today? I'm not going to let this slide. I got to pull her name up. Uh. Hold on. Karen Fukuhara, thank you. I could not remember her first name for some reason, but I remember Fukuhara. But uh, but yeah, so Karen Fukuhara, I love what she's doing with the character and what she can get through text and just overall ASL and sign language and whatnot, but uh, and body language. But I do feel like they don't really know what to do with those two characters at all in this season. So that's kind of one of my few ne- one of my really small negatives going through the show in the last couple seasons and just this season in particular. They don't know what to do with Frenchie. I, I don't know. It's weird as fuck to me. I I, I think it's kind of silly, but that's just me. That's just my opinion. But uh. But I also love everything they're doing with Ryan and Homelander in this season, having Homelander really turning Ryan into a fucking bully. You know what I'm saying? And the way that that guy's being an asshole and kind of deserves the treatment a little bit, but to a point. But it's like, it's it's kind of fucked up. And Ryan seems to be kind of getting some enjoyment out of it. So you kind of see um, Homelander bringing a little bit of darkness out of him, in a sense, where you know there's the good moral compass in him instilled by his mother. But man, like you can see the darkness inside of him, and you can kind of see that... That that darkness inside of him that kind of comes from Homelander and whatnot and everything. So it's it's very interesting. It's really really fucking interesting, man. So um, while this isn't necessarily my favorite episode of the season so far, it's a very good uh, episode of the season, and I'm gonna be very interested to see what happens with the seven after they just took out dude, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, dude that likes to get dominated over there, dumping homegirl because she's not the dominant one really anymore in the. In Vought Tower, but they straight up murk this dude. Homelander's like, we gotta do some shit that's kind of fucked up, but we gonna have to do it. I want you guys to stomp this motherfucker out. Firecracker, um, I think uh Black Noir and then the Deep, they straight up kill this motherfucker. A Train and Sister Sage are like, Y'all are crazy, you white people are crazy, man. And then uh um fucking and then Homelander's not doing anything because he's making them do it. But it's really fucked up, and Sister Sage is like, This is kind of fucked up, man. And it's kind of funny kind of seeing the realization of realizing what you're dealing with here. So I'm, I'm just so curious to see what's going to happen with Sister Sage throughout this thing and Firecracker. They're very two of the most interesting characters to come in a while. And unlike Stormfront, I don't completely hate them per se because I do – I enjoy watching them. So my Sister Sage, I don't actually hate or anything like that. I actually really like that character and I just kind of wonder what her mor- what her where her morals are at or what's her her thing here. It's, it's really interesting. She seems like a fucked up person, but I don't know. She just seems so interesting – but not as fucked up as the others, so it's very, very intriguing to see where her character's gonna go and what her ulterior motives truly are. And then Firecracker, I don't like the character, but I love the way that Homegirl's playing her, and I think she's doing such a phenomenal job with it. Um, and I'm just curious to see if there's gonna be any redemption for that character, because the Deep kind of had that a little bit, but now he seems to be kind of regressing back into his thing. But A-Train seems to be on the redemption train and seems to be on the road to redemption, so we'll see what happens with him throughout the rest of this thing. But yeah, like I said, another fun episode of The Boys. There's not really any episode in the show I dislike or anything like that, and there's no season of the show that I dislike. It's one of my favorite shows of all time, but I do think... They're letting Frenchie and Kimiko down in my heart, especially when Kimiko is one of my all-time favorite characters in the show. I think they were kind of letting me down in that regard. But I want to hear from y'all in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think about this latest episode of The Boys. Do you think this is the best episode of the whole show? Or do you think this is one of the worst episodes or somewhere in between like I do? Let me know what you think about it and if you have any predictions for the future or where the season's going to go. But don't put any comic spoilers in there. I don't want to know any comic spoilers too much. Not the ending or anything, because I'm trying to keep myself clear. Same thing with Invincible when that comes back. I want to see the ending in uh, format and TV or whatever on screen before I read it. So don't spoil that, please, and for anyone else. But if you have any um, theories and you don't know, go ahead and drop them below. 
But, uh, but yeah, man, so we're going to have these weekly recaps coming at y'all. We're going to try to get this one out a little bit sooner, hopefully next time. But we're going to have them for all the rest of the season. We're going to have House of the Dragon weekly recaps. Don't be sleeping on that. And we got a Bear Season 3 review coming at y'all real soon. A Quiet Place Day 1 should be up on the channel right now. We got a spoiler review for that. And next week, Maxine, one of my most anticipated movies of the year. One of my most anticipated movies of this decade so far. And part of one of my favorite horror trilogies. Hopefully, if they can stick the landing with this. Maxine with my man Ty West. We're going to have that review coming at y'all next weekend as well. So make sure you stay tuned. You don't sleep on any of this dopeness on the channel. And I will see you guys again real soon. Peace.